People get the wrong idea about spirituality, right? Yeah, yeah. Is Connor drinking any divine protein shake? Do you no longer value yourself based on how you look? Will I ever do the 40 day fast such as Connor did? It's, it's all acting, right? So I mean, I'm acting right now. Connor, where's the, oh, never mind. Oh my God. Bro, that's my divine protein shake. You owe me, bro. Oh, you what? What is going on, everybody? Jesse James West here. Hope you're having a great day. I'm here with the man, Connor Murphy. Say hello. What up? Hello. Sorry. The man's in Sorry, the I said what up. You told me to say hello. I told you to say hello. I apologize. Jesse's been freaking out on me all day. He's been actually. Nope. I'm, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say what he did to me in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm well, just gonna say that he is an amazing person and I deserved every bit of what happened. <laughs> anyway, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, follow the man down below. We're gonna be doing basically a first ever sort of sit down podcasty style of a video. And uh, we're just gonna let the conversation flow, talk about YouTube, talk about life, everything. We have some questions from you guys from my Instagram. Honestly, let's just get, let's do a background. Who you are, where you're from, age, everything. Let's do a background check, man. I need it. We're going to give Connor Murphy a background check right I've now. I've done some sh man. But no, it's a, <laughs> real quick. I mean, I was born in Michigan, raised in Arkansas. And then I went to school in near Austin, Texas, in a small school called Southwestern University. That's where I went, got into my whole YouTube career. Yeah. And that's where it blew up, so I'm glad that I went there. Didn't really like the college experience. What year did you start your YouTube? Yeah, back? it was like junior year, like halfway through junior year of college. And then, yeah, senior year was pretty much like school and just do YouTube, but finish school. I majored in computational math and ec economics. Computational math is like half math, half computer science. So my question is, when you were getting started in YouTube, what was your motivation to start YouTube? And then how quickly did it go zero to 100? Yeah, I just saw people like, you know, Ziz, Jeff Side. Those were kind of the two first people I saw in the fitness industry. Really, Jeff Side just like making a business out of kind of being a bag, you know what I'm saying? And so I was like, <laughs> okay, look, like Jeff Side is like an okay bag, but I can be like a way better bag. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that looks fun. And it would get me out of my comfort zone because I was a real shy, introverted kid at that point. I'm still pretty introverted, but I can turn it on when I need to, yeah. you know, the extrovertedness. And I started thinking of all these ideas. And then the, okay. the first thing was I went to a mall and got banned from the mall for posing in like the Abercrombie window. The did, cops now, came Did you me. get approval to do that or did you just do it? Oh, no, no. The cops came. This is the thing. So I was like, holy a back in the day. I was like, oh, I don't want to film the cops. I don't, I don't want any trouble. Like I'm not going to film them. It, so they banned me for five years it's actually been five years what mall is it are you I know, to say yeah yeah it's a katie mills mall <laughs> katie in, mills mall watch in, out <laughs> near near houston texas and i want to go back there was another channel that posted my stuff and i got my initial like first few thousand subs and then everything every video just went pretty viral after that it's i feel my, like you like, still have a very like even from like my my dms like showing on my instagram that i'm with you that you still have like a very loyal audience that like yeah. wants to see what you what you've done once you make it so far in life and see everyone is like okay if i get enough money if i get enough girls i'll be happy you know what i mean yeah. they have this Thing, it's like this illusion of like like it's like destination happiness they're like oh when I get to this destination I'll be happy when you I get to this destination that. you chase it and it never ends and that's when I started getting into meditation really? and this spiritual stuff people get the wrong idea about spirituality right yeah, yeah. it's more of a direct study of like epistemology Which epistemology is, is like how do you know the study of knowledge like how okay. do you know what you know and the best way to really know that is through like direct experience they'll latch onto this thing in, in the media the first thing they'll see and they believe it people have this failure to think critically about things mm -hmm. the only thing that you can really trust is your direct experience Experience. What do you think changed in the process to go towards that like spirituality or like all oh, that different oh yeah. thinking? Basically, I was in LA. I had everything that I really wanted. I was getting like a lot of girls. I had a lot of money. During the time, was it really fulfilling? No, that's what I'm saying. Nothing. Would you do it and be like, that wasn't fulfilling? I did it and I was 0% happier. I was so focused on like the money and the girls first. And then I was so focused on the spirituality. I'm like, oh. It, like none of this shit matters and now I'm like well damn being successful is good because you want a basis mm -hmm. a basis of being like safe and secure and have your basic needs met for you what would your basic needs be oh just like, like a is it like financial stability oh yeah I just want enough financial stability to like just like have a nice place not have to worry about I want enough money to eat what I want basically around that time I got into to meditation. You hear every successful person meditates. Well, this is the cool thing about meditation is like everyone is caught in like this programming and they don't realize that they're in this programming. You know, in the beginning it was like, oh, my senses are just better. I feel less anxious, but it shows you what this is, like, like what reality is. With this thought process of all these different things that come to you and either alter your path or reality or whatever, how do you absorb things now compared to the past based on like knowing that like all this is gonna influence you in different ways. Yeah. So like, how do you act upon things now? 
okay. what, what's proper, what's not, how do you know it to, to, to Yeah, and this is why, you know I'll, I mean? I'll tell you how I go, I go about it, but, and that's why, this is where forgiveness comes in, is that you realize that everyone was put in a certain uh, scenario, yep. and they were raised in a certain way, and conditioned by certain media, and they didn't really have that much control over it, man. In the past, like let's say two, three years ago, when someone would either be like, or something, I would look at them and be like, what's wrong with you, why right. are you being but now as I've gotten older realizing how they were raised the nature over nurture thing and like yeah and, and what's bringing them that I'm like I'm like I'm not mad at you I'm mad at your parents for raising you to be an you're not gonna get that deep at the start meditation is great because it just relaxes you and it's gonna get you more in the present moment and, and it's really for everyone it's you got to take it you got to be really serious about it and it's gonna take a, a, a while until your whole sense of reality starts collapsing so it, did you feel like your sense of reality was collapsing during the beginning of this all of these changes right it's only the ego that perceives it can perceive it as like negative right all this is like extremely positive and I don't want to scare anyone away from it you know what I mean but no it took it took a while and then you know like and stuff but um, they're not really gonna uh, they, they can help but I can give you glimpses of this but if you really want to incorporate it into your day-to-day -day reality it, it's it's really sober meditation that, that that's gonna do it you know because I feel like yeah. a lot of people are gonna think that like to, to get of that spiritual consciousness and everything they're thinking oh psychedelics it's like a tool and I did can you do them when, when you were like the junior year and like a few years post college I did a couple at festivals but I didn't get it I didn't get into it for the right reasons until Los Angeles okay. uh, when I was having all these insights about like, oh, my life is, is you know, I have all these things that everyone always wants. Did you wants come to these conclusions on your own of, like obviously you're, you're, the more, you were getting more money and more girls, you're like, this isn't good, I don't like this. Did you talk to anybody? Oh, and then you're like, came to realization or were you just like, I have realized this on my own? Oh yeah, I've always been very self-aware and I'm like, I, I, I just don't feel any better than I did back when I didn't have any of this. And that almost made me feel a little worse because I'm like, oh, I got what like I thought that I needed. Be, you yeah, should yeah. be feeling better. It's almost like a, like a guilt. And then I was like, well, I need to move on to something else. And that's when I got into meditation. So this is always a very interesting thing when it comes to YouTube, people putting on a persona, being a character. Obviously everyone's gonna be ha like a little hyped up when they're filming. No one's gonna just sit here and go, hey, um, today we're doing an interview. Like that's just, no one wants and watch that. So did you ever feel like the character of Connor Murphy that was online was like fusing into the, the Connor Murphy offline or like overtaking it and that was kind of like the destruction? It's all acting, right? So I mean, I'm acting right now, right? See, that, that's, all right, so that's, that's huge because when it comes to like, like people always saw me interviewing girls, doing picking up girl videos or whatever it might be or even like when I'm around my girlfriend now, like they see the way I act. I'm a very energetic person because I'm just passionate about what I do. You become a lot happier when you make other people happy, you know yep. what I mean? So looking back at your older content, you have videos with like 65 million views. You have second channel videos like 35 million views that were just like kind of almost like you were like eh guys we didn't get what we wanted today but here it is anyway oh yeah, yeah it still yeah. would go viral because I, I remember watching a video of yours and you were saying you wanted to do youtube full-time you knew you understood it right from the start it seemed so you like figured like okay like picking up girls doing pranks like that's all the big stuff and it's almost like you were ahead of the curve of understanding either the algorithm or just people watching it like like the structure and the flow and i'm watching it and i'm like it's very interesting to see like someone like five years ago making videos that could could, you could post today and still go. Really, it's all about watch time and audience retention. That's it. Was it something that you saw on the internet and you're like, okay, like that works. I'm gonna implement it. Or were you like, I have a genius idea? I mean, the type of content was like, oh, stuff like I wanna do will work. So it was like, this stuff works and now I want to expand on it, make it unique. It can be even better. Do you no longer value yourself based on how you look? Oh yeah, no, no, no. I, I mean, I like, used to, like, but with, no. like. Like you, you said, like you're getting really back into like six days a week training and everything. How much does the way your body look influence how you feel about your, towards yourself? Yeah, not a lot, man. I mean, it, it doesn't, I don't get any sort of validation from it. The reason why I want to build like a good physique is because, I mean, yeah, it definitely, it'll probably help me do better on YouTube, but it's more of like a game, you know? I see social media as a cool game. I don't base my, my worth on it, you know what I mean? I think from that's huge bodybuilding, to yeah. know because a lot of people that are getting into fitness or watch a ton of fitness, content tend to think that like it's like that game of, of if I get this then I'm happy yeah. and like when it comes to building muscle you I, I remember when I, when I first started I was like oh if I get to 170 then I'm yeah. good and then you get to 170 you go yeah, yeah. then when I get to 180 I'll be good and then you get to 190 and 200 and you're like it never ends and, and that's it, when people a, start abusing yeah. Exactly. It took six years to get this, and, and I'm so glad that I started at age 15, like getting into it. I was I was definitely like addicted to games. But then as I went from like 18, 19, I, I realized there's so much more to life and the experiences, like 
friendships, families, falling in love, eating good food, traveling, and like you can't do all those things perfectly if you are so conscious of, of looking perfect and gaining muscle. Like I used to, I used to never go out. I used to always turn down doing things. I, when I was on a date with a girl, I'd be thinking like, oh my God, all, all I'm thinking about is this isn't fitting my macros. This is yeah, kind yeah. Of, and, and like, it kind of, it can ruin. People see me as this like workaholic, go nuts, film, 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 film. And I found like a really good life balance right now of work when you're working, experience when you're experiencing. And I feel like that's really important and it takes time to learn. If you can balance things, do it. Don't try not to go so deep into one direction of getting caught up in things that aren't really gonna matter maybe in 10 years. So looking back over the past, let's say year and a half, the content you are making within then and even now and then like before, it's like there's this like gap of what you would say the wild outlandish stuff yeah, that yeah. people can look at and classify as. What is that? Well, I mean, it's all part of, you know, the story of, yeah. of Connor Murphy. And I, I believe that in the future, I think it'll age really well okay. because people will start getting into that sort of stuff. There was a lot of it that was calculated out, but a lot of it was just a pure expression of like, how I was feeling, look at how crazy I can act and look at how free I am from seeking validation from other people. Yeah. Did you think, like plan out all of this? A lot of it. Like lay it out and like, like write it down or? or yeah, like, yeah, so a lot of it was planned out, but then a lot of like, it is like. What were the bullet points that where you were trying to hit? It's all about finding this, like what you are and it can be achieved in this lifetime. And I'm not saying that. Is this I, the enlightenment? Yeah, yeah, and I'm not saying that I'm perfectly abiding it in it. Like I have, I have yep. work to do, but I've sure had incredible glimpses of it and I'm constantly working to get back there, right? When I was watching it all unfold, it was confusing because like the first one was like a goodbye message. You come out and you say that that was like calculated plan and everything and like and like a part of the play. This is the thing in the modern, modern day. In modern day, it's way harder to fake your death. You know what I mean? But no, you think that this is the thing is like you think that my initial videos had this strategy behind them. You know, the, like the Conor Murphy fake shirt trick, all this planning and strategy. Did I your to, family know that you were doing this? Like, yeah, like they were in in on it. You know, they, like yeah. did you call them and say like, hey, I'm gonna post a video saying goodbye, but I put. I'm not actually disappearing. Yeah, so like. Or did you let them have that fear too? No, no, so I, like a lot of my friends knew about it, you know what I mean? You've done some mm -hmm. What I'm taking from it is that it's more the sober state of mind that actually is what you're thinking in rather than the other psychedelic influence mind. For people that think that's what happened, you took this thing and next thing you know, boom, all this went right. It's a limiting perspective. It's a very myopic perspective. So anytime you're like, oh, this one thing caused that, it's never gonna be the complete picture. And of course, that might've been a catalyst. I went to college and I was 18. It was the darkest time in my life. It was everyone's dream, including mine, my family's of go be a D1 athlete, I was a, D a Division I lacrosse player, oh, nice. nationally ranked, you know, like in high school, everyone's like, he has everything planned to a T, like his life, he's set. So I was like becoming this person that I didn't want to. I go through these motions of waking up at 6 a.m., being drilled by a drill sergeant, it wasn't actually a military school, but like the coach of like the formation of that school and like the program was very militaristic. And I was like, I don't want to go to the military. Like, that's not what I signed up for. I want to play Zeal Lacrosse, live out the dream, have a scholarship that no one gets ever, like go to a $60,000 school a year for free. Like I felt like the world was a lie to me at the time. I was supposed to experience this and be, this is the best four years of my life. Like, per, like personally and being very truthful with you and vulnerable, like I truly wanted to like die. Like you could have rocked me across the face and I've been like, yeah, like, yeah. I just don't, I don't care that you hit me. I have no anger, I have no emotion. And I was intelligent enough and aware enough to get out of it. And I did, I quit, I, I started, I was gonna transfer and everything. But what this led me to was this enlightened feeling of, which I cannot describe, and I'm sure you're gonna be like, I can't describe my feeling. So like, that's kind of a relation there. I felt so free, a thousand pounds lifted off my chest. In reality, it was just me just making decision, this conscious decision of there's more to life. I don't want to do this. I don't want to live out this thing that everyone else sees. This, this this, this amazing thing that everyone wants isn't really good. This whole thing where I wake up in the middle of the night, see my mom's mom, like crazy spiritual experience. Oh, no way, really? Yeah. Oh, and like, that's why when I when I, when I I hear you out and stuff, it's like, I'm I'm not judging. I'm, I'm genuinely taking it all in, want you to know that. Yeah. And because I know that I've experienced some crazy shit and like people are like, what the f But I'm like, hey, you never know like until you experience something crazy. That's probably one of the reasons you're so much more open-minded is because you had some sort of like uh -huh. experience like that. Everyone has their different definitions, but there are so many different like facets to like awakening and so many different uh, intellectual outputs 
from certain like experiences and it seems like you had such a deep like awakening into just like peace you yeah. know what i mean yeah i feel like i found peace to that so we have a few questions from you guys that we're going to be answering some of them are quite interesting oh i'm sure <laughs> all right is he back again are you back what does that mean are you is back he... like maybe is your is your old content coming back I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to film some old stuff, you know what I mean? Would you say almost like a, a new, a newer Connor is that? Like, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do my old type of content, you know what yeah. I mean? Because do you enjoy I'm just trying to get, content? yeah, yeah, I enjoy doing it's it. Fun. I'm just trying to get some YouTube views now and I've kind of uh -huh. given up on everyone. And I, I've done as much as I can to try and portray my other message, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, that needs to just stick to the spiritual channel. Is Connor off s Yeah, I mean, I haven't done them in a while, yeah. When, when do you like choose to do, like strategically do it or it just kind of like happens? Oh no, no, it's strategic. I mean, I do it for, like, it's funny, it's like, it's so hypocritical that the bodybuilding community is, is <laughs> accusing so me of being on <laughs> when the bodybuilding community is one of the most toxic infested cultures I've ever seen in my life. We won't get into that too much. Saying. It's contradicting. But, oh yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. But the idea is that like, I did them for like spiritual purposes, like as a, from a meditative standpoint, it's yeah. not like I go out and try and like party on them or stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, this is this is for real like self-development work, you okay. know what I mean? But I haven't, I mean, I haven't done them in a while. I haven't done them as much as people think. I was really hyping it up for the whole, okay. for the whole like play thing that I was like doing them like all the time. And because that's a really important thing that people don't even know. Oh yeah, I yeah. didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah. oh, I, I haven't done them that, I haven't done them nearly as much as people think, you know? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Is Connor drinking any divine protein shake? Oh yeah, man. I mean, uh, and is it yours? Yes, yeah, mine. It's just mine. Can you explain that? What made you do that? It helps you become more neuroplastic. It essentially, I mean, it's like a, it grows your brain. How often are you doing the divine protein shake? I mean, every time I expel the divine protein shake. Really? Previously, now, or at any time? Your take on roids. I know you have an anabolic scale. I, I've heard some of it, but like, oh, what, yeah, is it how much you're on or the what you're on? You're yeah, well, yeah, I'll tell you exactly what I took. People don't believe this. They're like, oh, we probably. It, it's funny. The most like honest video, I come out and like explain everything, and they're like, no, he's taking more. You know what I mean? I took Austrian for like a couple weeks. Gave me gyno, so I stopped. That was the same time you're I was. Your gyno removed? Nah, it's still there. I took finasteride and Austrian at the same time. Finasteride is like a hair loss thing that helps block DHT. Oh, okay. Is some, that technically not natty then? If you're well, taking for Nastride? Oh yeah, this is the thing. That's why I, I talked about the whole non netty spec. Yeah, really? that, oh, a uh, finasteride, that makes you finasteride is altering the anabolic compounds in your body. So, of, I mean, that's the thing. It's, really? it's a spectrum. I would think that it, it doesn't because DHT is a very anabolic compound. So okay. I think that would it would only hurt. If you take away DHT though, it does increase testosterone, but I think DHT is actually more anabolic. But like, dude, if, if I could take testosterone and it not be suppressive where I could, this is the thing, dude, the a zombie apocalypse is coming. Like, I don't want to be on testosterone and then have to get off of it because <laughs> the zombies are <laughs> everywhere. I can't go get it from and a, then, from then a medical professional. Like and, and then I'm terrible. crashing and then the zombies kill me. You know They're what I mean? They're gonna eat you. Exactly, dude, so that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> I'm not attached to being natty or non-natty. I don't give a f I was just trying to explain where I'm coming from. It was in no way some justification of being like, oh, like I'm like, what the f No, you can call me as non-natty as, 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 as possible. But the idea is I just want to, uh, I want to be as, you know, like lean and jacked as I can while still maintaining my health. So I'm not willing to eat a bunch of like f animal products to get my protein. And I'm not willing to get on testosterone and, and, and suppress my natural testosterone. I am willing to get on a growth hormone secretagogue that does nothing except produce your own growth hormone m m naturally yeah. more of it and it doesn't suppress it at least like better sleep better overall sense of well-being and it helps you build muscle at least and helps maintain muscle and so like why not hop on that you know what I mean so yeah, yeah that's the idea will I ever do the 40-day fast such as Connor did honestly I don't think so my calves are already really tiny and I just don't want them to shrink anymore uh, I, I like my French toast too much what is the most common thing that you guys have our urge to interview women Oh yeah, probably. It's just like, it's, it's, it's an addiction. Also, I mean, we breathe air. Ah, oh, I forgot about that one. We like eat food and we're on planet Earth. I mean, th there's a few similarities, yeah. Yeah, I, I have one. Body count, is it a high or low? I quit counting because I, I figured <laughs> it, I, I figured it was kind of, and I'm, not, I'm not boasting that having more bodies is good. It, it's weird, man. You'll go through phases. So I think like the pickup phase that I had was so good for my self-development because I learned how to become more confident. I learned like human psychology and I just learned how to talk to people and it was really beneficial for me, but there was definitely a little unhealthiness behind it because I definitely was getting some validation off of like sleeping with women and that was what it was more about. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the real Connor Murphy, okay? Hopefully this cleared some air on things and you understand who he is, what he's about, <laughs> all right? We had some good conversation. 
make sure you check out his stuff. Subscribe to me. We're on the road to a million. We can get there with your help. Turn on your post notice, drop a like, and watch the whole video. As this man says, that's what the key is. I will see you guys in the next video, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, to stay relentless. Am I right? Yeah, I'd do that. I'd listen to him. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. Peace.